This video is going to be more about good coding practices. We're not going to change the game a ton here, but what we are going to do is make our code a little bit more readable. So we're going to start by looking at the hero. So the hero has an act method. We're going back here because this is like the first thing we did is we, we made some code that made the hero move around the screen and then, you know, we, we were able to shoot and, and then we were able to see if the hero got hit by an alien. But as you may know, being a, a beginner coder, this is pretty complicated for someone who's never seen code before. And if you look at the act method, it's getting pretty long. It goes all the way from here down to here. I actually have to scroll on my screen to see it. And there are different parts of the act method that do very distinct things. For example, you know, this code right here is responsible for, as you can see, moving our hero around the screen. And this is code for where we shoot. You know, this is kind of already broken up. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it up even more. We're going to make it a lot more readable and a lot more, here's a word for you, modular, where we break our code into smaller chunks. So, as you can see here, this is the end. This bracket here is the end of the act method. And you can see that when I highlight one bracket, this one shows up. So the act method goes all the way from here to here. So after the act method is over, I'm going to hit enter a couple times, and I'm going to type public void, and I'm going to type here key control with two brackets like that, and then an open curly bracket, enter, enter, and an end curly bracket. And what I've just done is I've created a method called key control. What I'm going to do is take all this stuff here, all of this code, including the comment, and I cut control X and I paste it in here. And what this means is if somebody wants to use the method called key control, all of this code is going to happen. Now, how do we actually use this code? How do we call the method? All we do is we copy that, paste it here, semicolon. So I've changed the way the code looks by creating a method that is responsible for key control of the hero. So in the act method, we call key control, which will run all of this code and then do anything else. So in terms of functionality, how the game works, nothing should change. If I hit run, left, right, and I can go up and down. I forgot, I haven't even changed that yet. We really only want to go left and right in this game. So if I go to level one, or sorry, if I go to hero, this here, this is in the act method, this calls the method that I've made called key control. If I take this out, if I forget to put this in, watch what happens. I lose my key control, left, right, up, down. Because I have a method called key control, but I didn't use it. I've got to actually type key control like that. And while we're at it, let's take away the up and down, because in Space Invaders, heroes can't go up and down. Okay, now this code here is responsible for shooting. So I'm going to do much the same thing. I'm going to make another method, public void shoot. And I'm going to take this code, copy it, paste it here. And then I'm going to type shoot. And then this one here, well, this code checks to see if the hero's been hit by an alien. So I'm going to cut that code too. What do we want to call this method? And we are making up these names, by the way. We, we are not bound by anything here. Um, well, it checks to see if we got hit by an alien. So let's say check for alien. Like so. Two brackets. Enter, enter. Paste. 
and then I want to call that method from here. Okay, so what have I done? Well, what I've done is I've changed my act method so that it's much neater. And you can see, key control, shoot, check for alien. This is much more readable to someone who wants to know what's going on in my code. They might not want to go into all of the details of everything, but for someone who needs to read my code, they can say, okay, well, they're doing something about key control, and then they're shooting, and then they're checking for alien. And maybe these aren't the best names, they're off the top of my head. Um, you know, key control, we could call it check for move, or something like that, because really what we're doing here is we are checking to see if someone hit a key. So we'll go check for move, and then maybe this is check for shoot. So we've got a bunch of checks going on, check for shoot. Because, and the reason I put check for is because we are, it's conditional on if this happens, just like check for move if this happens, and the alien is only if we actually hit an alien. So now the act method says, okay, the hero, every time the hero acts, we're going to check to see if they move, check to see if they shoot, and check to see if they got hit by an alien. But it's going to run the exact same way. We haven't changed anything about the functionality of the code. It runs the exact same way. I still get hit by bullets. It's just presenting in a different way that's much, much more organized. And now you can see you've got the power to wrap your own code in these things called methods. All methods have two brackets like that. And when we have the two brackets, it means that we know we're calling a method here. If we didn't have that, it would fail. It would say, I can't find a variable called check for move. I don't know what this is. So you have to have those. So this has made our code a lot nicer to read. And I still have to put in a lot more comments. I haven't done a great job on that. Now, when we go back into other areas of the code, for example, alien A, in the last video, we learned how to animate. Again, if you look at this code, all of this code is about animation. So I can cut that code, public void animate, and then enter, enter, paste, and I just type animate right there. In other words, please animate now. And again, no difference in the functionality, as long as I remember that whatever you do, you have to call the method after you create the method. So you can look around your code and you can find you know, places where the bullets act method also is getting fairly big. Now there's not gonna, you don't have to go making methods for everything, but if you see you know, things that are, I guess, um, modular, like if you see things happening in the method, or in, in the act method, sorry, if you see ways to clean it up by creating your own act method the way we just did with the hero, do it. But, you know, this line here is responsible for moving the bullet uh, up the screen. I'm not going to go and make a method for a one-liner like that. that. That doesn't need to happen. But, you know, I might look at this and decide that I want to make a, a method for this um, called you know, check for hit alien or something like that. Or I might not to if it's going to mess up the if else statement. So it's just kind of a way to clean up your code. It's not mandatory, but it can help you um, make your code look a little bit better in places where it's necessary. I'm just looking to see this, like, like this one here. So this could be one where I make a method. This is in the alien class, the super class alien where basically this is shooting. And this would actually be an excellent example because this is fairly hard to understand. This is the code that randomizes the shooting. So instead of having that, I could go after the act method, type public void random shot. And just with that title alone, the whoever is reading my code can go, oh, random shot, that must have something to do with shooting randomly. And it helps them to read it a little bit better. Same thing right here. I could make a bounce. And I can just, once I get good at this, I can copy that format and just put bounce here. 
in your bracket, take all of this code, copy, or cut, I should say, paste, and this is the code responsible for making the enemy or the alien bounce. And there we go. Now I've got nicer code. Okay. So these classes that we have, I'll click on hero. They have classes typically have these things, which are called fields or characteristics of a class. Every hero that I create is going to have its own shot timer, its own shot interval value, and its own move value. Every class also has a constructor where it does something upon creating the object. And then after that, classes have a whole bunch of, you could make as many methods as you want. So all of these are methods of the hero class. And that's basically how Java classes break down. Fields or characteristics, constructors, and then methods. Okay, so take a look at your code, try to make some methods like I have, and we'll pick it up from here.